Alrighty, hello, hello. This is uh, a quick and dirty Helm tutorial. And by quick and dirty, I mean very much so. As I have performed no real preparation, aside from listing off a number of things that I wanted to get covered in just something most people should know and a resource that uh, new players to the game can look at for quick reference to common techniques and that sort of thing. So I'm just going to kick up a quick game here. I am soloing this ship so I don't have a crew to communicate with, which is a little unfortunate. But I just want to rattle off a few new techniques and uh, operations that should prove helpful to the player that has less than an hour of gameplay under their belt. I will leave the uh, the discovery of controls and the like to your own uh, to your own reference or creation, as the case may be. There are knee boards that can be uh, given to you for uh, the basic controls. This is just all about the techniques. So I'm gonna start with the concept here of pulsing or feathering warp. This is useful for modulating your speed or distance to target, as I will demonstrate down here with this Scarn Enforcer, who is faster than me at impulse speeds. And of course it's low vis, so I can't really see it. There we are. So just being next to him, I should get proximity tango, which is to say he'll start paying attention to me for no other reason than I'm close. Or Yep, here we go. Target is veering. So he's going to start chasing after me at impulse speeds. As you can see, he is faster than me. His weapon arc is closing. And I need to get away. But let's say I don't want to get really far away. Because you usually don't. So what I'm just doing here is turning the warp on. And turning the warp right back off. On. Off. On. Off. Pulsing, feathering, warp. You can do this to just move a short distance without uh, going too terribly far. You feather appropriately, you can move distances as small as, you know, five, six hundred units. And just doing this, I can, I can stay out of this guy's uh, jaws indefinitely, as long as I have energy. And I can reasonably precisely keep my distance at more than 1,000, less than, you know, 1,600 if I so choose. So there you go. Feathering warp, pulsing warp. Uh, da -da -da -da. The next thing, which is sort of along the same lines. We're still on a feathering note. However, whoops, those are mines. The next one is feathering or uh, toggling reverse on and off during a beam engagement. Which I just need uh, a nice candidate here. Whoops. So I want to uh, turn my reverse on and off as necessary to stay in range of this target because obviously we want to continually shoot the thing. And if I continue reversing, as you can see, I will eventually be out of range. So I just turn the reverse off, turn it back on. Same concept, on and off, just to maintain that range to target. And you would do this throughout the engagement. I can select a proper target, there we go. So we're gonna turn the reverse off, close to target. You hear the shots fire, you throw the reverse back on, and it keeps you out of the range of the targets behind the one you're shooting at. So, feathering reverse. Next up, of course, is the energy is now approaching relatively small amounts for stock Artemis here. A nice, quick, efficient way to dock without uh, waiting for the tractor beam to draw you into the station over a long period of time. This is the method I use to dock all the time. It should be pretty useful. What you do is you make your way toward a station, and you approach that station at 
warp 1. And warp 2 right now, but now that we see it, we close to warp 1, and we just approach, turn warp off when we reach the 1000 mark, coast in at impulse, hit the dock button, uh, once the uh, range to the station falls under 600, and you just coast right on in. You can do that uh, very reliably. Let me just get turned around here. Warp 1 to the station. 1k warp off. Under 600, hit the dock key, and you just coast right on in. And just to demonstrate, if you were to pull alongside without using the coast in, you will note that it takes quite a bit longer to get in there. Still trying to dock, still trying to dock. Getting drawn in just by the tractor beam. No forward momentum, well, sideways in this case. But you can see it's just, it's taken a little while. Now, I have a couple of scarns that are going to be causing me some issues as I only have three stations. I'm just gonna knock those out quick, hopefully. Oh dear. Please stay on the station. Please stay on the station. Pay me no mind. Pay me no mind. I get the impression that they anti-torped both of those. They're going to be annoying. Well, let's, uh, let's just try to get through as many of these as I can, and I'll just restart the scenario if I have to. Next on my list is the concept of blowing by a target. Okay. So very often it can be useful to uh, hit the backside of a target with torpedoes. Uh, well, I suppose that concludes the sentence. You will want to do this if your target's rear shields are down, but their forward shields are not. And. I am not going to demonstrate properly here by getting this thing's back shields down, but I will demonstrate insofar as this is what you do to blow by. You know, you just... You fly right over them, like you were doing a bombing run, and you just fire the torpedoes on the other side. Torpedoes hit the tail end. Those are P-shocks, so they don't do any damage when the shields are up, but you get the idea. Simple. Similar concept exists for... Uh, a kind of orbital strike or tailspin maneuver or sketch maneuver, who knows what you want to call it. But the idea here is you want to hit the facing of the target that's on the other side from you as you have uh, the target trying to face you. So what you do in this situation is you get some nice distance here, you fire the weapons, and then you induce the target to turn by changing the location you are. This might be a poor example. Yeah, that struck forward anyway. Uh, on higher difficulties, targets will have higher turn rates and higher speed, so that the tailspin maneuver kind of works better on higher difficulties than on lower ones. Lower ones, you typically want to do the, uh, the blow-by maneuver I just showed you. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the next thing. Asteroids as fire obstruction. You can't actually shoot through through asteroids. Let me see if I can get a nice volunteer to demonstrate this point. Whoops. This is gonna hurt. Convenient. I need their attention. Give me a nice shock. Not going to do any damage here in Vanilla Artemis, but it is going to get their attention. 
I'm flying straight into a rock. <laughs> okay. So these Kralians have become turning toward me. Our difficulty might have been warranted for the sake of this. Alright, you can see the Kralian cruisers over there. I'm just gonna dive behind this asteroid here. And we will demonstrate, as I move into the enemy's arcs, that they will not be immediately hitting me, except for that guy over there. You see this one in front of me is not shooting, because the asteroid is in the way. Same token, I can't shoot him because the asteroid is in the way. So, sufficient concept relayed. I'm getting out of here before I get shredded too much. What's up next? Ah, yes, the roundup technique. I'm going to need to find a carrier. When contending with fighters in Artemis, the ideal way to deal with them is to get them to follow behind you and drop a mine on them. However, if the fighters are too spread out from each other, you might not kill the entire wing. And, uh... My personal best for destroying numbers of fighters with a singular mine is somewhere in the 30s or 40s. You can kill lots and lots and lots and lots of fighters with a single mine. There's simply no reason <laughs> to use more than one. To that end, let's get ourselves some mines. And some energy. And we're going to have to go looking for some nice carriers to launch some fighters at me. So the thing with uh, fighter behavior in Artemis is they don't have what we call hard tango. Which is to say, they will not target a particular ship to the exclusion of all else. They will simply chase after the thing that is nearest to them. Here we go. Some nice fighters. However, they also often require a little bit of time to exit their post-launch stage of trying to figure out what they should be doing, which is why they're not pointed directly at me right now. Uh, so, as I was saying, the fighters will take the shortest direct path to your ship, so you can exploit that fact to make them take the course you want them to take and kind of converge on one point. You can see that these right now are a little spread out. They're still actually quite bunched up, which makes them a reasonable mine target. But by positioning myself, I'm going to need a little more maneuver to make this work. You see they're in a bit of a line right there. If I kind of cross the T, as it were, I can make myself equidistant to as many fighters as possible and draw them toward a singular point. You can see them starting to kind of merge. And now they're in one great big tight grouping. Drop the mine. Get out of dodge. Whole wing goes. So there you go. That's your roundup technique. It can be more difficult the more spread out they are, but the concept remains the same. Next on my list here is the black hole safe ranges. New players are often intimidated by black holes, thinking, oh my god, they're very dangerous at the rim. They're not. They're very dangerous in Empty Epsilon, but here in Artemis, you're actually pretty darn safe. Well within the thing. So this here is your black hole. The only part of it that will actually damage you is the dead center. So you can see I am feathering warp so as to not quite fall all the way in here. But you can hang inside this inner ring pretty comfortably. You just don't want to touch the middle 
because that happens. We are lucky I had my shields up. Otherwise, we probably would have just gotten demolished. Yes, your shields protect you from a black hole for a very brief period of time. And by very brief, I mean very brief. So there's that. Uh, climbing and diving. You saw me do some diving behind the, the asteroid earlier. Uh, climbing and diving has the... Uh, the benefit of allowing the weapons officer to see more of the ship in front of them. I would like to pick on something small. It's not going to get me slaughtered. I wouldn't worry about it if I had a full crew at my disposal, but I, I really don't have that. Tell you what. We'll just kick up another sim, lower the difficulty, so that I can get singular ships. It will be more cooperative. So, as you can see on the main screen, main screen there, we are roughly coplanar with this Gralian cruiser. I'm going to drop my impulse down to about 40%. Going to the weapons manual beams, you can see that the, uh, the coplanar situation, you can't see the back of the ship all that well. You can see it, you can shoot it, but you can make it easier by climbing on the plane. And I'll turn maneuver on so it goes a bit faster. You can see that the uh, the visual angle on the ship is changing. However, other ships will rise or dive to meet you as well. This can be useful just for opening up uh, different angles of a ship to shoot at. Or it can be useful for, uh, in some cases, avoiding asteroids. If you ride the ceiling or ride the floor, uh, asteroids placed in the middle of the 3D space can be just flown right over or under. You can even sometimes do this with mines, but I wouldn't recommend trying. There is also anecdotal evidence to suggest you can do it with Nebula as well. I've never seen that work personally, but it could be possible. Next on my list here is the uh, the evasive mine or the, uh, the J-hook mine drop. Which I will demonstrate very poorly. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start different one. It's going to have some fleets in it. Because typically when you're doing a J-hook, you want to do it to uh, a fleet of ships. You're never J-hooking a single target. You're just letting them close on your tail. Let's get some nice mines in. Find me a nice fleet. That one down there looks nice. Move on down. Hopefully this Skarin doesn't tractor me as I go by. There we go. So what you want with an evasive J-hook situation is a lot of shields and a lot of maneuver. I'm only one person, so I can't really modulate both of the things at once, but the general idea here is that you approach the target and as you arrive on target, you spin around, drop it, and turn back more or less the way you were coming from. Just like so. There is your J-hook mine drop. Not best execution. Execution is improved with better crew members and more crew members than one. So that's the general idea there. 
Um, I've already discussed hard tango and proximity tango, but I will add a little more information. Proximity tango happens, as you might have guessed by the name, when you're just nearby a target. Fighters are controlled entirely by proximity tango, however warships, such as Kralian cruisers and Skarans here, they can be hard tangoed, which is accomplished by means of shooting them. Shooting them piss, pisses them off sufficiently that they will actually give chase to you to the exclusion of all other, th all other things. They won't even shoot at other ships. They just chase after you. Another way to get hard tango is by way of a comms taunt. The hard tango lasts for three minutes before they uh, revert to their standard behavior, but those three minutes can be ample time to open them up for another ship to kill or to just drag them into a minefield as I am sort of doing right now. I'm not going to be patient enough to actually let them hit the minefield. That'll take too long because low difficulty, low speed. Yeah. Ah, yes, that's the other thing. Let's just get rid of that. We in the Artemis community are a big fan of our EMP nuke combo strikes. We like to hit with the EMP to uh, reduce the target's resiliency to the nuke that comes afterward. However, you do need to be aware that the order in which these are fired is going to be different depending on whether the ship is stationary, moving away from the target, or moving toward the target, and at what speeds. If you're at impulse speed, you can pretty much fire them without worrying about it. One, then two. However, firing at warp speed, you need to reverse your order of fire, because, as I will demonstrate with, I guess... Yeah, I may as well use the EMP nuke. It's still going to kill them because it's an EMP nuke. But the idea here is I need to fire the nuke first because I will be approaching this target at warp speeds. So that's the nuke in the back and the EMP in the front because I'm outrunning the torpedoes. I think that covers the concept. That'll, uh, that'll demonstrate the impact. There's the EMP contact, everyone goes yellow. Nuke contact, everyone dies. And, ah yes, one last thing. One last thing that's important to know is phraseology that will help, uh, help you understand where your captain wants you to be. I refer to this as relative positioning. Your captain may order you, for example, the group up here near Charlie 3, he may order you to get hard tango on, uh, on the fleet there, and then reposition to, oh, 2 o'clock relative the black hole. And what that means, we'll just uh, go ahead and grab hard tango here by shooting them. What that means is to move to roughly a 2 o'clock on a clock face position, as if the black hole was the center of the clock face, as you can see here. I am currently at roughly 2 o'clock relative, 3 o'clock relative the black hole, and for funsies we'll swing back up to 12 o'clock relative the black hole. The real question is, what are you relative to? Are you relative the black hole, relative the fleet, relative a particular set of mines, relative a station? That's really the, uh, the defining factor. So just swing around the, uh, swing around the minefield here, come to a stop at six o'clock relative. You get the idea? I think that covers the concept. Yeah, yeah. Any questions, you can ping me. But uh, this should be useful to the new person, to some degree. Stuff like that. That'll conclude this quick and dirty, no, uh, no frills tutorial. Hopefully it is useful to some degree. 
Oh my, it's 25 minutes. I was really hoping it would be shorter than that. Oh well. Mirab with sails unfurled. Hopefully this was helpful.